name is Rosie Goldsmith and welcome to my riveting interview series, Conversations with Authors from All Over the World. My nickname is Rosie the Riveter and one of my great passions is introducing readers to riveting writers. You may already know The Riveter, our magazine of international writing, as well as our online riveting reviews and riveting reads. They're all dedicated to giving foreign writers in English translation the prominence they deserve, which is exactly what I want to do with this series of riveting audio and video interviews. They're all free via our website, eurolitnetwork.com. Welcome to today's riveting author. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's great to see you. and I'm really, really happy to introduce you to one of my favourite people, one of my favourite Swiss writers as well. Now, every time I talk to and meet Dana Gregorcia, I smile. She always makes me smile. She's so ebullient and full of life, full of ideas. I think she is basically a philosopher of life. Now, Dana is a journalist as well. She's been a lecturer. She's a novelist. She's written children's books. She has a thirst to communicate. I think that's what she's described herself as. Um, she is uh, sitting in Zurich at the moment um, in lockdown, so we can't be together. But it's great to see you, Dana. How are you? How's Hello, lockdown been for you? Thanks for uh, yeah, talking to me. Uh, it's great to see you even through this uh, um, uh, technique. Yes. Uh, with the help of technique. Now, Dani, you've been very busy in lockdown, I think. Um, you write, as I say, but you've also set up a publishing house as well. Tell us about yes. that. Yes, me, with my husband, uh, with my husband, Pericles Monudis, who is uh, also a writer. Um, we we uh, set up a publishing house, Telegramme Verlag, and we uh, already uh, published uh, 15 titles, um, Swiss authors, um, uh, but also classics, uh, new discovered classics from uh, the electric time, the electric epoch, um, 1900. Um, and uh, we, are, we have a great fun uh, discovering and reading and uh, um, designing the covers and uh, talking with journalists about uh, the books we love, about uh, literature. So uh, we have a great time. <laughs> now, Dana, we need to explain a little bit about you know, your background, where you come from, what your passions are, the languages that you speak and you write. There's a lot to tell people, I think. Um, now, you were born in Romania and yes. um, you were born, um, you were 10 years old, in fact, when the Romanian Revolution happened in 1989. So tell us about your background and um, how you came to Switzerland. Yeah, you know, uh, it, um, it would be a novel subject if it wouldn't be so uh, round, you know. <laughs> because uh, it's, it was my family, for example, my, my great grandfather who was the mayor of Bucharest, uh, he, he could have come to Switzerland when the communists uh, took over in Romania. The king, um, uh, Mihai, who, who uh, left Romania and came to Switzerland, uh, gave, so proposed uh, him um, made, made him his, this offer to, to join him to come to Switzerland and he refused. He said, yeah, I, I won't go, I won't flee. I will, I will go when I choose to go. And I um, grew up in communist Romania. I grew up with uh, this terror regime with, uh, with my uh, parents, uh, despite uh, the dictature, uh, with this uh, time of, uh, of, of silence, with this time when, um, in which people mistrusted the language, were afraid to talk, were afraid to say the uh, wrong thing, uh, in times when the language changed because um, uh, it became, the words um, started to have other meanings. It was uh, the propaganda time, the time of populists, the time, um, yeah, of silence. And uh, I grew up with lots of music. I grew up in front of the opera house and uh, 
uh, did ballet and uh, like all the girls in our quarter. <laughs> I read a lot. I read a lot of English literature, of French literature, of German literature. My parents wanted uh, me to grow up in a, um, in a um, school, to be educated in a school with the, uh, not so much propaganda. Um, so they sent me to the school of the German minority. Do you think, Dana, that in a way you're making up for everything you feel you didn't have when you were a child in Romania? Because you're so busy and you do so many different things and you speak so many different languages and you have so many projects all the time. It, it, well, you know, you know, as a child, you, you won't miss uh, these things. If you grow up in a family that loves you, if you grow up uh, surrounded by love, by people who um, live with, uh, with the art, uh, live reading, uh, listening to music, you won't miss uh, a lot. Um, there was only a sensation of uh, um, of being captive, but I couldn't I couldn't realize uh, what I was feeling until much more later. What remains of your Romanian background and your 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 commitment to Romania today? I mean, you you write about Romania still in your novels, and um, I, I know that it's a very important place for you but you're living in Switzerland now. How do you combine your two, the two parts of your soul? My first novel uh, uh, plays in Romania, Babarada. Uh, it's a funny story about claustrophobia, actually my punk novel. Um, and, uh, and then my second novel, uh, an instinctive feeling of innocence uh, um, plays in Bucharest. It's about, uh, it's about, the story of a city and uh, the way we change a city and the way um, places change us. And, um, and uh, the, my third novel, it's, uh, it's a novel about uh, an artist playing in, uh, um, in Zurich. So I, uh, it, I, I don't want to write only about Romania. You know, it's not... Uh, um, I am not in first place a Romanian, but an artist. So I, I am free to choose my uh, themes. Um, so, uh, and in, the, in my last novel about Dracula, I return to Transylvania, to Romania. I tell the story um, of a despot, of uh, people longing for the strong hand, for, uh, for the um, unyielding ruler, um, uh, the powerful, uh, bloody ruler. Tell me about your feelings about Switzerland. And did, did it take a while for Switzerland to grow on you or do you fall in love immediately? Well, I, I came uh, to Switzerland uh, because of love, you know? So, <laughs> so I... Uh, uh, I looked upon Zurich with the eyes of a, a person in love. So imagine that uh, it was also love at first sight with Switzerland. Um, and it's a, it's a country you easily fall in love with because uh, it's a country where you can, um, uh, you, you can live this direct democracy, which is a great, uh, great experience, you know, to, to, um, have this freedom to uh, decide on every aspect of life, um, and uh, it's it's actually it's a, it's a school of uh, democracy. You know, living in Switzerland, so you learn what what it means to to be a citizen, uh, which is a good school for me. You know, <laughs> and um, and uh, Switzerland has the right size for me, so everything is in reach. You have uh, uh, high mountains. You have, you know, 400 meters. Uh, you can go high up and uh, experience that romantic uh, feeling, you know, being uh, in the wild nature. Then you can go a little bit um, 
lower and make some ski and to go a bit lower and uh, uh, go to a theater and uh, enjoy literature and enjoy art. So it's, uh, it's a lot of art here. And um, uh, it's, you can make many things possible. So if you have ideas, look, we just founded an editing house that works, you know, we are really uh, living as artists and we have an, a publishing house. So um, this wouldn't be possible in, uh, in so many other countries. Switzerland is such a mixed country as well. People don't realize, you know, how, yeah. how many different nationalities live in Switzerland too. I think it's yes. really, you know, and there are a lot of, um, you know- 81 only in Zurich, you know? Incredible, isn't it? And, you know, being Romanian or Eastern European is actually quite, you know, I, I, I know several East European friends in Switzerland too. So I think that's one thing people don't realize how mixed it is, you know? Yes, um, it is mixed. And you have, you know, uh, already in Switzerland, you have four um, national languages. And uh, it's a great experience to hear how people, um, you know, mix languages and uh, this German with the uh, French words uh, to hear it. It's a, it's a great, it gives you a great sense of freedom. It's great. No, I, I agree. I love, I love being in Switzerland. I think we both, I think we both love Switzerland. I yeah. think we, <laughs> we can agree on that. Um, yes. Donna, can you try to sum up, I'm just thinking of your novels and your essays as well, um, and your children's books, and, you know, your lovely essay book about um, Uber Empathy, about empathy and art yeah. and all the things you write. And I described you as a philosopher of life. And I'm just wondering, what do you think the, the fundamental drive is for you? What are you trying to do with everything you write? I try to share, you know, I try to, to, to give something. I try to, um, to give something from my experience, from, uh, um, from my tournaments, from my thoughts. Uh, so it's about sharing literature, you know, I, I love to read and writing is this prolongment of uh, this passion for um, reading, for literature. Thank you so much. And, you know, we've got one book of yours in English, An Instinctive Feeling of English. Yes, I um, have it here. I have it here, you know, because oh, it was, it was um, uh, I did with this book, uh, my, my uh, one of my last, uh, reading tours. So I was with this book last year in America, in uh, Chicago, San Francisco, Washington, New York, Seattle, you know, with my translator, Alta Price. So we had a great time uh, and we met uh, extraordinary uh, people, wonderful readers. I hope also that, um, you know, people will get to know your writing all the other books you've written your children's books as well and you know your your, your dracula novel which uh, is coming out next year so let's hope and dana thank you so much for talking to us it's always a pleasure to talk to you and i look forward to seeing you, in you person again very soon but uh, thank you again very very much thank you rosie thank you <laughs>